everyone. This is Marjorie with my trusty little please subscribe um, sign and ring the bell. So anyway, just a little reminder. Um, if you're interested in keto or, um, you know, beauty after 50 or 60 or close to 70, <laughs> you're watching the right place. So today I'm going to talk about um, keto macros and what my plan is regarding macros. First of all, if you're new, you're probably wondering what a macro is. If you're not new and you've been doing keto for a while, my guess is you're pretty, pretty, uh, you know, pretty up on macros. So before I came on, I looked at my app just so I could give you the um, accurate amounts of my personal macros. Uh, back to what they are, first of all. Uh, carbs, protein, and fats. They're the main essential building blocks. Um, everything else is, uh, you know, miscellaneous vitamins and that type of thing. So anyway, carbs um, would be anything that's carbohydrate, basically sugar, um, flour, you know, pasta, bread, anything with gluten, um, even oatmeal, um, vegetables, some are higher in carbs than others. And then there's also, um, and of course vegetables, some vegetables are okay to eat on keto. Um, and then of course fruit. Fruit is pretty much all carbs. And occasionally some people eat berries, um, but pretty much everything else is off limits. Okay, now, so there's carbs, protein, fats. Protein um, is the building blocks of our body. You know, we, we need to have lots of protein. Um, and on this keto diet, you're supposed to have certain percentages. Um, I'd like to make a disclaimer right now, I'm not a doctor, and so you need to do your own research for yourself. Everybody's different. You need to um, uh, check with your doctor before you start a um, new way of eating or a diet. Um, so back to protein. I pretty much, when I started, did not measure and do any of that. I went with the old adage that a serving of protein is the size of the palm of your hand. And um, <clears throat> so now, um, fats, what are, what are the fats that we are allowed to eat? And of course, we've all had it ingrained in us that fats are evil. Fats are not evil. Fats are also what we need to uh, keep our our joints lubricated. I don't even know all the reasons we need fats. All I know is that it's what keeps our hair shiny, our skin soft. Um, fats are important. Fats are not what clog our arteries. Fats are what keep our arteries supple and soft. It's the, the carbohydrates that calcify in your arteries and cause them to be brittle so that they break and have, you know, I, once again, not a doctor, just know all the things I've read and, um, I'm completely convinced that fats are not evil. Fats are necessary. Now, they have um, chemical fats are not good. Chemical fats being um, hydrogenated oils, that type of thing. Um, mostly anything that's in a box food. So basically, um, the fats that I'm talking about are healthy fats. That would be um, avocados, uh, macadamia nuts, macadamia oils, olive oils, MCT, coconut oil. MCT is derived from coconuts. It's the medium chain triglycerides, which is the big um, selling point for coconut oil. Um, Kerrygold butter I eat, um, heavy whipping cream, and then the and those are saturated fats. And then of course the other saturated fats would be things that come from bacon. Um, bacon just happens to be my favorite. <laughs> And then it, it would also be any fats that are in any meats. You want to get the fattier cuts of meats, uh, which are more flavorful and less expensive, strangely enough. Okay, so um, one thing I wanted to talk to you about are the three different uh, things that you're probably hearing on here. Um, of course, there's the keto, ketogenic diet. 
You've probably heard of intermittent fasting. You may just see the initials IF. Um, and then there's OMAD. People are always going, um, I'm doing the OMAD. Well, what is OMAD? It's one meal a day. Those are acronyms. Um, intermittent fasting is uh, something you don't need to think about when you're originally starting keto. You just need to become fat adapted. Cut the carbs out, keep your fat levels and your protein levels up. This is not considered a high protein diet. This is considered a moderate protein diet. You want enough protein so that you're not robbing the rest of your body, but you do not want to have more protein than necessary. Um, okay, uh, back to intermittent fasting. Once you become fat adapted, which happens after you've been on keto for a while and your body has switched over, it no longer requires or craves carbohydrates, you are just using fat, fat that you consume, and also fat that's accumulated on your body. When your body burns the fat that is consumed, it just starts taking fat from your body, which is what we all want. Um, things can happen when your body is, is burning fat. You can be detoxing because fat stores toxins and, and uh, all the chemicals. It's, it's the storehouse, fat is a storehouse, uh, you know, for storing up for a winter or whatever. Um, okay, so intermittent fasting is also not something that only ketoers do. There are lots of people who are not on keto that do intermittent fasting. And what is the definition of intermittent fasting? Basically, it's where you give your body a window of time with no food consumption, um, and the longer the better so that your digestion has a chance to rest and recover. And when your body is not digesting food, that's when it's busiest doing the healing. Um, for me, my eating window is technically nine to five, although I'm pretty much only eating one meal a day. Um, I, ha I do have my bulletproof coffee in the morning, which a lot of people do consider breaking the fast. Um, and then I eat, you know, during between nine to five and uh, after five, I do not eat any food. And so my body has a 16 hour fast and um, an eight hour window where I eat. Uh, once again, not recommended for new, new um, ketoers and, you know, basically get established, become fat adapted, learn what works for you on the keto diet. Don't jump into everything you see everybody talking about. Um, I've been doing this for six months and I'm just getting into intermittent fasting and one meal a day. And I did something today that I'm really excited about because I'm kind of, I'm kind of, um, so you, you get uninterested in food after you've been on keto a while. Uh, it's not the food doesn't taste good. It's that you're not craving things. Your body be, starts becoming satisfied with what you're eating. Fat is very satisfying compared to carbs. So I made myself a little list. It's going to live on my refrigerator and I tried to make it pretty since it's gonna live on the side of my refrigerator because I don't, you know, anyway. It's one keto meal a day. I'm gonna hold this up for you to see and then I'm gonna take it down and read it. Um, this is my particular favorite things that I can make and I can also adjust for, for my family to eat as well uh, because they're not doing the keto diet. The reason I started smiling is because I just realized it looks like I have a flower bouquet coming out of the top of my head. I think I'll move over just a hair. <laughs> So one meal um, during the week, perhaps Monday, would be salmon and broccoli. Uh, just put that in parchment paper, put some um, avocado or macadamia nut oil on it and some herbs and put the broccoli in and wrap it up in parchment paper and then put that inside of foil and throw it in the oven for a while. And it will come out delicious. Okay, chicken alfredo and zoodles. Chicken alfredo, how easy can that be? You just um, I cook chicken thighs every week in my crock pot because I feed my dogs chicken thighs and I keep a big container of them. So all I need to do is take the chicken thighs um, and shred them up a little bit or dice them up. 
I prefer dicing, and then make my Alfredo sauce with some uh, heavy whipping cream and some Parmesan cheese, um, some garlic, and then make zoodles with zucchini, and that's my noodles. And I prefer to cook them. I used to always eat everything raw when I was doing raw food classes back in the day when I was vegan, um, but now I prefer my zoodles cooked. <laughs> Uh, the third one would be a guacamole cheeseburger, one of my favorites and what I'm having for dinner tonight. And you can have that with like mashed cauliflower. Um, fourth would be pepperoni pizza and mushrooms. You can make pizza. Okay, this took me a long time. I've just discovered pizza. And after I make my pizza, um, which you make the crust, I basically just use shredded cheese and a couple of beaten eggs and I mix that all up together pat it down on a sill pat, which is on top of a baking sheet. And I bake that for a while in the oven and then I take it out. There's recipes for this. I'm not giving you the recipe right now. I'm just telling you how it's made. Then I put pepperonis, some more um, grated cheese on top, some mushrooms, you know, a few sauteed onions, whatever floats your boat for pizza. After I've eaten my pizza, which usually I can cut it into about eight slices and I eat two and the others I put into, in, I put on individual paper plates and put them into a big Ziploc baggie and put them in the freezer. I can warm them up and have them for a lunch or a meal uh, when my family's not home. And the next thing is fajitas, uh, shrimp or chicken or steak and dice up a little bit of onion and I get uh, this um, three colored pepper uh, diced or sliced um, frozen pepper, bell pepper mixes, uh, and I keep them in the freezer, so that's a quick and easy meal. And of course, I don't eat them in a tortilla, I just eat the fajitas. And uh, cabbage roll soup, that's one of my favorites. I've got that recipe actually on one of my other videos. Quiche, I've also got a picture of the quiche that I made my husband for his birthday. And I make that with uh, cheese and ham or bacon and broccoli. Um, you can just do all kinds of different quiches. My other two favorite meals would be going out to Blondie's and having a Cobb salad. That's our local little diner. Or going to Hortensia's and having lobster tacos. Yeah, I just order the lobster tacos and I just, they're on soft shells, two of them on a plate. I order them a la carte and I just eat them right off of the shells and when they come to pick up the plate, there's two empty shells laying on the plate. Love it my very favorite when I figured that one out. And then of course the other thing is I do have my Bulletproof coffee, I have iced tea, I have my newest thing that I'm doing which is my um, my soda stream with some lime squeezed into just the carbonated water because my New Year's resolution was no diet soda for the entire year and of course after that I won't start up again either. Um, and then my keto lemonade. Now, other than that, I may snack on a few peanuts. I do not do that often, but if I'm dying for something salty and crunchy, like popcorn or something, I would, I would eat a few peanuts or maybe some pecans. Uh, the other thing I might have is a pickle, a little baby bell cheese, a little tub of whole, individual tub of holy guacamole with some um, uh, mozzarella string cheese that I use to dip in it. And I just have one more thing to say to you. I am promoting Keto Casey's calendar because I love it. Food is not the boss of me. Do you want to know what? Food is not the boss of me. Yesterday I came on and I told you that um, I was kind of sad. I had gained a pound. Well, guess what? As of today, I'm officially exactly 43 pounds from my starting weight. So this is a new low for me. I'm so excited. That's a stupid scale. Anyway, I would like to say thanks and uh, for watching and I would like to know how you're doing. And as you know, if you watched yesterday, we aren't always doing good. So if you're having a hard day, leave me, you know, your comments. And if you're having a good day, leave me your comments. And please subscribe. And thanks for stopping by.